You know, for months we've been tracking the future of EV batteries, but a huge leap just went from, uh, from rumor to reality. It really did. We're doing a deep dive today on the big news out of the Guangzhou Auto Show, the MG4 Angsen edition. Mm. Now, they're billing this as one of the very first mass production cars with the semi-solid state battery, and that signals a major, major shift. It does. So our mission is to understand what this battery tech is, why it matters now, and you know what it really means for a car you can actually go out and drive. This is where things get really interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating because what we're really doing is defining a whole new category. I mean, a semi-solid state battery, mm. it combines both solid and liquid parts. Right. But the key here, the semi part, means the solid materials make up like 90% or more of the electrolyte. This specific pack is a manganese-based lithium-ion battery, a joint project between SAI and Kingtel Energy. So if it's mostly solid, what's the big win there? What's the engineering victory compared to what we're all using today? Well, the advantages are crucial. You're looking at a much higher energy density, and this is the big one, vastly improved thermal stability. So safety. Exactly. Better safety. And it opens the door for much faster charging in the future. But the real genius of this semi-solid approach is its compatibility. Ah, uh, with the production lines. You got it. Unlike full solid state, which needs brand new factories, this chemistry can, for the most part, use existing production lines. That speeds up adoption in a huge way, which is exactly what SAOS is doing. Okay, so let's connect that breakthrough to the road then. This MG4 Angsen Edition, it's rated for 530 kilometers. That is on the CLTC cycle, which, for anyone listening, is the Chinese standard and usually a bit optimistic. A bit, yeah. But here is where it gets really, really interesting when you look at the data. Go on. The capacity is 53.95 kilowatt hours. That's identical, I mean, exactly the same as the current LFP version that also gets 530 kilometers. Wait, hold on. So we've got higher energy density, but the range is exactly the same. Mm -hmm. That feels like the core tension here. Where is that extra density actually going? It's going into safety and into weight control. The engineering win right now isn't more range. It's achieving that superior stability and density without adding a bunch of weight. So it's not heavier. Barely. The new pack adds only about 15 kilograms. The whole car is still a competitive 1,500 kilos, so you're getting a huge stability upgrade for basically no weight penalty. But a battery that advanced, it kind of demands a cutting-edge experience inside, too, right? Oh, absolutely, and they deliver. But the cockpit, mm -hmm. it got a serious digital overhaul. That screen looks massive. It is. They bumped it up from 12.3 inches to a huge 15.6 inch screen. They also got rid of most of the mechanical buttons and the whole thing runs on the MG Oppo intelligent cockpit system powered by that high-end Snapdragon 8155 chip. It's a proper tech injection. So wrapping this up, what does this all mean for you? We are literally watching advanced battery technology, something that felt a decade away, move directly into a high volume mass market car. I mean, the MG4 was already selling over 11,000 units a month. And if you want to connect this to the bigger picture, the speed here is just incredible. Regulators are already getting ready to rename these things from semi-solid state to solid liquid batteries. To make the distinction clearer. Exactly, it clarifies that this isn't the zero liquid holy grail just yet. And that brings up a really important final thought for you to consider. Why is that regulatory distinction, just changing the name before the tech is even widespread, so crucial for the industry right now? And what does it tell you about the rate of innovation you can expect to see next?